Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, we're diving into a fascinating blend of physics and technology with an RGB fan experiment. This isn't just about making the fan look cool. We're going to explore how the human eye and LED technology can trick the brain into seeing a spinning fan as if it's completely still. By precisely tuning the LED cycles, we can create an illusion where the fan blades appear stationary. It's a practical application of the persistence of vision phenomenon, and it's a fun way to see science and tech come together in a visually impressive display that we can make ourselves. So let's get started. But before we see the fan in action, where are we going and how did we get here? I remember being a little kid and watching an episode of The Partridge Family on TV, but something bothered me. The wheels on their bus appeared to be spinning backwards as they drove down the highway. Now, I'm not sure when I precisely figured it out, but the reason is actually pretty simple. The camera only takes a certain number of frames per second, like 30. And if the wheel rotates almost far enough to make it around one time per frame, but it's short, let's say about 10 degrees, then the wheel will actually appear to go backwards a small step each frame. When we assemble those frames into a motion video, the wheel appears to be spinning backwards. I'm sure you've seen the corollary to this as well. In those more rare instances where the wheel makes exactly one revolution per frame, it will be appearing as if it's standing still as the vehicle slides on by. Recently, I did an episode on an LED software package called Night Driver LED that can control PC fans, as you can see in this Threadripper example. The fans each contain a set of individually addressable LEDs that we can control the color and brightness of, and use that control to achieve some rather interesting effects. Here we can see a music reactive effect that lights fans to the beat of the music, and here's an example of a fire effect that's tied to the CPU workload of the machine. And finally, here's an effect I wrote that is intended to simulate the old 9-track tape reels of an IBM mainframe. Now, in the video comments section, a clever viewer proposed an interesting experiment. Rather than making the fans appear to spin backwards and forwards with the LEDs, could I just flash the LEDs at precisely the right rate to make the fan itself appear to be standing still? And that got me to wondering. It sounds simple enough, but could I do it in practice? Let's take a look at what we need in order to undertake it. First, we need a fan, of course, and more precisely, we need a fan that has LEDs that we can control in order to strobe them at the right rate. To that end, I grabbed the spare Corsair fan that I had on hand, and I looked up the pinout. It turns out there's a ground, of course, and then a 12-volt power feed for the fan. With just those two, it will run. There's a PWM fan control line that allows you to control the fan speed via pulse width modulation, and a tack line that gives you a pulse signal every time the fan goes around. There's a separate four-wire connector entirely for the RGB LEDs. It has another ground, a 5-volt power supply input, data input, and data output. To control the LEDs, we need to send a signal on the RGB data line that tells the LEDs when to light and what colors to turn to. We'll just be changing them back and forth between full white and completely off. But to do this, we need a control chip of some kind to do the work for us. I'll be using an ESP32 microcontroller, which has the wonderful combination of being simple enough to understand and use, and fast enough to carry out our task with ease. Plus, they're like under $5. I've plugged it into a breadboard and connected the power and ground rails. I've also interconnected the grounds of the fan's RGB connector and the ESP32 itself, which is important. The data signal that we'll be sending goes from the ESP32 to the fan, so they need to be ground referenced the same so that they can each see the signal. The first thing I wanted to do was to sanity test the whole idea and see if I could make it work visually before I did the work of automatically detecting the fan speed and so forth. To that end then, I connected a simple potentiometer, just a variable resistor like a volume knob. With one side of the pot connected to ground and the other to power, I used the ESP32 to read the voltage available at the pot's pickup and then map that to a fairly wide frequency range. I wrote code to flash the LEDs with a frequency that mapped to the value on the potentiometer powered up the fan, and started twisting the knob. With a few code revisions on the frequency range, I pretty quickly got something that could at least make the fan appear to stand still for a second, or at least slow down. But the control was way too twitchy. I couldn't get it to stabilize very well at all. And that's when I knew that I'd have to be more precise than I could be with the big knob, and unless I really wanted to narrow the range that it mapped to, but even using the knob at all kind of felt like cheating. Especially since the fan has a tack line that will actually tell me how fast it's going around. I couldn't find much for documentation on a PC fan standard, believe it or not. Some fans have a tack line that produces a single pulse every rotation, whereas some pulse twice per rotation. I quickly realized I could avoid a whole bunch of calculation by using an interrupt on the CPU, so let's take a second to talk about what an interrupt is. 
Your CPU, whether it's in your PC or RESP32 in this case, is normally busy running whatever code is loaded into it. When an interrupt occurs, either from some button being pressed that's connected to an input line or perhaps our TAC line connection, whatever code the CPU was running is temporarily shelved. The entire state of the CPU, including all of its registers, is pushed onto the memory stack, and then it jumps to and executes whatever function has been associated with your interrupt. The interrupt code does its thing and then quickly returns control, which pops everything back off the stack, and the CPU picks up right where it had been working before, absolutely none the wiser about having been interrupted. Everything about the CPU had been saved and restored, so there's no disruption of the running code. The interrupt code, though, does something important when the TAC signal fires each time. We set the ESP32 up to run some special code every time that happens. Code that has the net effect of turning on the LEDs and then turning them back off again quickly. In theory, since the flash comes as a response to the TAC pulse, and the TAC pulse fires at precisely the same point in the fan's rotation each time, it should flash the LEDs perfectly in unison with the fan. And I'd already be done. So did it work? Well, sort of. It did effectively freeze the fan, but once per rotation turns out to be way too slow to flash the LEDs. At 1000 RPM, that's only 16 revolutions per second, and that's just too slow and flickery to be visually appealing, and it looks really bad on camera. So it worked in principle, but in practice it just wasn't satisfying. I hadn't solved it quite yet. What I really wanted to do was fire the LEDs not once per revolution, it turns out, but once per fan blade. When the fan has advanced enough that the next blade is in the same position as the previous blade was just milliseconds ago, we flash the LEDs again. And we do it each time a fan blade passes the top, or wherever the tack sensor is located. That should have the effect of freezing the fan, but since there are nine blades, we get nine flashes per revolution. More important, that gives us a refresh rate of 144 hertz, more than fast enough to look good. And it'll be nine times brighter than the once per revolution solution as well. The problem becomes how do you generate an event for every fan blade when there's only one sensor? How do you take an event that occurs once per revolution and make it happen nine times per revolution? Well, what I wound up doing was to look at the tack line coming out of the fan. I wait for the signal to be pulsed high, meaning that the tack line is being pulsed. Then I wait for the line to be low. I measure how much time is spent, both high and low, add them together, and that gives me the period or duration of a full rotation in microseconds. To convert that to a frequency, I divide 1 million microseconds by the number of micros that the fan rotation took. We can then calculate the fan RPM as the frequency in hertz times 60 seconds per minute. We divide by 2 because guess what? As far as I can tell, the Corsair fan must be 2 pulses per revolution. At least if I don't do that, it doesn't work. If you've got a better explanation than 2 pulses per revolution on the tack line, or you can see a bug here that would otherwise explain it, please let me know in the video comments. To figure out the frequency of the LED strobe that we want to fire, we multiply the RPMs by 9 since, as we said, there are 9 blades we want to illuminate on each one. We then divide that RPM by 60 to get a frequency in Hertz. Once we have the strobe frequency, we just plug it into the alarm timer. That will cause the alarm timer to fire and call our interrupt with that same frequency. Every time the alarm fires, we'll flash the LEDs exactly once. So it should work in theory, but does it? Well, it turns out that it does work, but it's still a little blurry. Part of that is the amount of time it takes us to set up and flash the LEDs and then turn them back off. The fan is spinning at its maximum default speed, which makes it harder to get a crisp freeze frame. The good news is that there's a fix for that, and it can be found in the fourth pin on that fan connector, the one labeled as PWM or speed control. If we can generate the appropriate signal for this line, we can slow the fan down to a more manageable speed. Since our code auto senses the fan speed, it should automatically adjust and give us a crisper visual result. The only documentation I could find on the Corsair fan control was that it was a variable duty cycle at 20,000 Hz. So to generate this signal, I used one of the special controller channels on the ESP32, designed especially for producing PWM waveforms. I set it up as pin 4 and then set the duty cycle to a very low value, like 10 out of 255. As soon as I ran the code, I got the result I wanted, thereby slowing the fan down to about its minimum speed. This produces a reasonably crisp image of the fan, frozen in time. It still drifts a bit because it's almost impossible to match the fan speed perfectly. Even breathing towards the fan is enough to speed it up or slow it down by just a fraction, and I only readjust the speed when you hit the button. 
I'll put the code up on GitHub, and if you've found today's episode to be any combination of entertaining or informative, remember I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so please be sure to leave me one of each before you go today. And if you have any interest in matters related to the autism spectrum, please check out the free sample of my book on Amazon using the link in the video description. From mind blindness to hyperfocus, it's everything I know now about living a successful life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. In the meantime, and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you, and a rocking chair for another who likes to rock, and a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.